Hey, I'm Jake, and for this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys the little bit that I know about the latest Logic Pro X 10.4.2 update, and I'm pretty happy about some of the things I've seen so far. So first things first, I'm going to share with you guys the feature that I like the most. If you click at the menu bar, Logic Pro X, and go down to the sound library section, you'll notice that we have a new option called Relocate Sound Library. You can now move your stock sounds 70 gigabytes in size to an external hard drive. So instead of having it installed in your internal hard drive, you can now allocate it anywhere you'd like. That is probably the most important feature that quite a lot of users have been waiting for. The next thing, if I press Option Command P, that will open up my notepad section. Or if I just right click this square icon at the top right. Before, in the notepad, you could just type and you just save notes for your session. Now, if you right click, you can import an image, capture selection from screen, or you can even drag an image. Why would this be useful? Well, let's say you're new to music production or you just like to keep maybe a, a chart of helpful information about music production. You can now just drag it in. So let's say I want to have my circle of fifths. I just drag it in. Let's say I want a cheat sheet. There we go. And if I drag out my notepad, it's more readable. And now I have the charts that I'd like in my music production session. So that's a very, very welcome feature. The other thing is that we can take screenshots. So let's say, uh, let's say I have alchemy. I can now capture a screenshot. Let's say I want to save this preset that I made up or I've, I've just observed. So I can capture selection from screen and just drag, release, and my screenshot will then be available. So some people might really like that. So that's a welcome feature. Now the other thing is we have a new feature in the mixer. So if I press X, that will open up my mixer. And you'll notice that in the top, at the top of the mixer section, there's an option that says sends on faders. So basically what happens is this is your, this is normally at the bottom part of the mixer, this is normally your volume fader. You can substitute your volume fader to act as a bus fader. So you see over here in sends, it says bus one, bus two. Usually in my mixing sessions, you'd have to drag this to adjust the levels, this knob. And it's, it's kind of small and difficult on the eyes. So now you can just turn this on and you'll notice that one set of the buses light up yellow. And if you click over to the right of the power icon, you can actually choose which bus you'd like to select. So in this case, I want to select bus two. Now you'll notice that the volume fader changes color. Now it's yellow. That means it's acting as the bus fader. So if you look over at bus two and at the circle, you'll notice that you can adjust the fader accordingly. So there we go. As I move this fader, the wheel turns up. That's a really handy tool. And then if I click bus one, it acts the same way. Bus one you can see at the circle, it's moving up as well. So to turn it off, you just click the, uh, the power button and it's back to the volume fader. The next thing that I want to talk about is alchemy. So in alchemy, we've had quite a few changes. First, I'll go to advanced, click file, initialize preset. And you'll notice that in the sources section, A, B, C, and D, if the source is not selected, it now grays out. So that's a bit of a good visual appeal, it makes designing a little bit better. The other thing is, before we had to turn the knobs manually, now if you double click the word section, so in this case, the tune section, you can now type in the value, which is a good feature to have. The next thing, and the thing that excites me the most, is that we now have an alternative to importing our own custom samples. And if you guys don't know this, Alchemy automatically detects the sample, the pitch of the sample, 
whatever sample it is. I just said sample a billion times. So let's say we're previewing some samples. And let's say I want to bring that in. Now I can just drag it. And you'll notice that four options appear. Additive, spectral, granular, sampler. I'm going to put this into sampler. And if I click A, there it is. So I can now play it directly. That's a lot simpler than the EXS24 workflow. So that's a great feature to have. So the last thing I want to talk about that I know so far about this new update is the automation improvement in Logic Pro X. So I'm going to press A and that will open up my automation arrangement view. And I'm going to draw in some points. So let's say I want to make a curve and bring, I want to make a slope from this point to this point. Before, what would happen is logic overwrites it. You can't get that zero to zero point. Well, now logic snaps that point so you can get more accurate automation node curves, which is a really, really handy tool and very much welcome. So that's all I know so far. There are other things that I've read about. For example, with a large session, it no longer lags. The GUI no longer lags. Selecting a track becomes a lot smoother. So if you want to find out more, just go to the release notes. And this is how long the list is. It's mostly feature improvements uh, and not too many new features, but that's still good. So anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next time.